still surreal um, to be a starter because uh, I know there's so many guys who are more than deserving of, of being a starter. So I'm, I'm definitely honored and appreciative of that for the fans, media, um, and my peers for voting me in. Uh, definitely speaks volumes uh, to the work I've put in and, you know, everybody taking the time to watch the Wizards and watch what we do. Uh, so I'm definitely happy and appreciative in that standpoint. Uh, but this is by far the best and the easiest All-Star I've been a part of without all the extra stuff that I have to do. So I'm literally here showing up to play a game and leaving, which I love. So compared to the other two, I love this one. And what is your reaction to the news that Joel and Ben will not be playing tonight due to contact tracing? Yeah, so actually Joel just texted me about 30 minutes ago saying his barber had it or whatever. And it's kind of messed up. Uh, that's, that's unfortunate, uh, but they're both more than, than deserving of it, you know, of being here. Um, just hope we can keep everybody safe. Obviously, that's the, the biggest and the main concern uh, of being down here. Um, so, I mean, that's unfortunate. Hopefully, everybody can, you know, stay safe in that regard and, and uh, we can have a good game with them. Fred. Hey, Brad. Um, you, you would you had discussed a couple of weeks ago, like I guess reservations might be the best way to put it about just an all star game in general. And obviously, a bunch of other players said said similar stuff. Um, why do you think it was that the players ended up kind of coming together and, and deciding that everybody's going to go? Honestly, it's uh, I don't want to say we didn't have a choice, but it's in our CBA, you know, um, in our CBA, it says that there has to be an all-star game every year. And um, it's a lot of language in there that can get kind of get ugly if we, if we didn't necessarily, um, you know, come down and go through with the, the all-star game. So there's still guys reserved about it. I'm sure uh, I'm still hell reserved about it. I'm, I'm trying to stay healthy and get as much rest as I possibly can um, because we jump right back into the season right after this. So, uh, I'm with you in that regard, Fred. I mean, everybody's going to be a little bit reserved still, but um, at the same time, it's in our CBA that, you know, all-star game has to be had. Thanks, Fred. Chase. Hey, Brad. Um, you played in this game before as a reserve. Now you're a starter. When it comes to the actual game itself, does that change your approach? Like, do you feel like maybe you can do more or uh, – be more aggressive looking for your own plays? I don't know. I really, I haven't even thought about how I'm really going to approach the game. Um, maybe see how, see how my body feels. I mean, that's, that's definitely most important. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I've never been a starter, so I don't know how the minutes are going to work. Hopefully I'm not playing a lot of minutes, obviously. Uh, but, you know, I'm just going to go out, have fun, compete. Definitely try not to get hurt. That's the most important thing. So. Christos. Bradley, how are you? Well, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I would like to ask you, how special is this appearance for you? Because it's your third uh, time as an officer, but it's the first as a starter. How do you live it and how special it is for you? Uh, it's super special. You know, it, it means a lot. Um, to me personally, to be able to have the respect of fans and my peers and the media and even coaches around the league, just being able to have their respect of knowing what I was doing this year and um, giving me the honor of starting in a game. Uh, like you said, this is my third time and I've been a reserve and the start still hasn't really hit me, probably won't until my name is called, but um, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm ecstatic, you know, to be able to see the numbers that I had this year, uh, the number of votes that is, and, you know, just to be able to see just the, the progression of, I guess, my popularity in the league. Um, so, you know, that's not something that I play for, but it's it's cool to be able to have that recognition. So um, I'm definitely excited about tonight. I'm happy I'm here and more than happy I'm going to start. Dan. 
Hey, Bradley. Um, I'm curious, kind of, in the course of your NBA career, even maybe even stretch back to Florida, how much has just sort of the notion of practice changed? What goes on in a practice? How hard people work? Um, how much team stuff has changed? And even in this COVID year, how has practice changed for you guys? No, well, I mean, it's, it just it's predicated on the coach and the system, honestly. Um, in college, we practice pretty much every day, very hard. You have to make sure your ankles were taped. And, you know, Coach Donovan wasn't he wasn't playing those type of games, playing them games. Um, then when I got to D.C., Whitman was pretty much the same way. He had the Bobby Knight mentality of we're going to go hard, we're going to practice, and shoot around It's the same thing. We're going to go hard, be locked in, practice kind of thing. Um, Brooks was more or less the laid-back guy, and practices began to dial down more. But I think that's been the transition of the league. Like, everybody doesn't practice as much as they used to. Um, and then especially this year with COVID, like, we can't practice. You know, everything is on a state-by-state -state basis, and large group gatherings can't be had. Like, a lot of times we're not even able to eat together in the same conference room like that we usually eat in. So it's it's been, a, it's been an adjustment and a change. Um, the practices, I feel like, the longer I've been in, the more dialed down, dialed back they've been. Sure. Does it change when, when you've got, I mean, you've got a new teammate, a pretty high profile teammate and Russell and practice would be good for you guys, I would imagine, right? As you tried to figure each other out. And obviously there were a lot of different things with injuries and stuff like that. But it, do you think the lack of practice has hurt teams? Yes and no. Um, because we play every other day. So, I mean, you kind of, have to ask yourself where do you have time to practice in terms of resting your body getting you know proper rest and everything in that nature and make sure everybody's healthy if we play every other day it's going to be really tough to practice so um you know we we approach it how we do and we're all professionals you know that's kind of why we get paid to do what we do and uh the beauty of our situation is we have a lot of great character guys who are able to adapt and adjust on the fly um, so when we added Russ, that was, that was a plug and play. That was easy. You know, um, it's just learning how he plays, learning where he likes his spots. And, uh, I think that's been an adjustment. And then ultimately us being healthy is, is the ultimate thing for us. You know, once we had guys back healthy, uh, we were able to find our rhythm and create some rhythm and guys get back into the floor. Full of the game. Neil. Brad, uh, congrats again. I wanted to ask you, obviously, all-star break, you know, you get a few days off. That's not going to be something that you have the luxury of in the second half of the season. You work a lot with Jesse and the performance team to take care of your body. What does all-star break look like for you in just terms of rejuvenating yourself? Uh, looks, I would literally probably have a total of maybe 48 hours of rest, 72 hours maybe. Let's see you off yesterday. Play today, report tomorrow, leave Monday. So, I mean, we leave Tuesday, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, it's, I get as much rest as I, as I possibly can. Um, you know, I'm still in season mode. Like, Jesse's still here, so I'll still get my work in today. Um, I'll still approach today's game like a regular game. I'll still get that same work in, um, shoot at the same time, hopefully. And, and go through my routine just like I would a normal game. Um, and then right after that, you know, we go back home tonight. I'll rest tonight. Uh, another day off tomorrow in D.C. And then we fly out on Tuesday to get ready for Memphis on Wednesday. So uh, I'll just use the next couple of days, man, to just try to stay off my feet as much as possible. Um, but at the same time, I'm, in, I'm still in season mode to where I'm locked in and ready to go. Naveen. Hey, Brad, congratulations to making it to the All-Star Game once again. This is Naveen Gulani from the Philippines. You guys, the Wizards, started building some momentum before the All-Star break. You guys started to get healthy and racked up some wins. You had a successful West Coast road trip. Do you think during that trip where you beat teams like the Lakers, you know, things really clicked and maybe a connection with Russ started developing better? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you can say that. I think just Russ being a little bit more healthier helps us, um, you know, us getting our 
full team back um, helped us. And we understood that the West Coast was all playoff championship caliber teams we were playing. And, you know, we we couldn't just go in and play the way we've been playing early in the year. You know, uh, we had a really good practice before we went out West. And, you know, we kind of carried that momentum on throughout into the games. And uh, it, was, it was definitely it's definitely great to be able to see, you know, us go three and one you know, on that West Coast trip and then be seven and three in our last 10 games. You know, so we've been playing really good. Um, but, you know, I think it's just a testament to us getting back healthy, um, being dialed into, you know, defense, because that's what's going to win us games. That's what keeps us in games. And uh, and honestly, everybody just getting their rhythm back. Like DB has his flow back. Um, Rui is getting his flow. Russ has his flow. I've been flowing all year. So it's been it's been good for us. Julio. Hi, Brad. Congratulations for the All-Star game. Uh, what do you think, uh, what characteristic of your game do you think makes you an NBA All-Star? You said, what part of my game do you think makes me an All-Star? Yes. I don't know, maybe I can score the ball solidly. Okay, thank you. Quinn. What's up, B? Q, what's up? Um, a lot of people in here with a lot of good questions, but I want to know first, did you get to watch last night's 2v2 between Harlow, uh, <laughs> Two Chains, Quavo, and Lil Baby? And what were your takeaways from last night's uh, game, if you did get to watch that? I did get to watch, I did see highlights, but I will say I know Quavo and 2 Chains. Quavo can actually hoop. And I heard he had like 17 out of the 21 points. So yeah. that doesn't, that didn't surprise me. And 2 Chains can hoop, but you know, Drew, my trainer actually went down to Atlanta and worked out 2 Chains for like the last couple of days to get him ready for it. And it, it didn't go, it didn't go good for them. So I'm, I'm definitely, I got to get on Drew Head about that. You know, you, you wasting people time, man. So, no, but that was, that was good for the culture, good for, for Atlanta. Quavo's a hooper. But I think Hitman Holler from St. Louis can give Quavo a run for his man. Now, nah, Holler, he's, he's definitely tough. And my second question for you, All-Star is all about swag and different things, colorways and stuff like that. Do you have anything special on your feet tonight or any accessories that you're going to break out for this All-Star game? Uh, I know I'm wearing all black tonight. Um, I honestly have absolutely no idea what Jordan Shield I'm wearing today. Okay. I think it's some. I know they, they got something special for me. Uh, they sent me a practice shoe, but I don't, we don't have practice. I don't, we can't practice. But I'm sure I have some, I'll have some heat on tonight. And uh, size 11 in those powder blue ones, my brother. Just size 11, I got it. Hit me up. Brianna. Hey, Brad. So my question is kind of similar to Quentin's. Of course, you always represent St. Louis. Um, and I've noticed you've been wearing a lot of St. Louis brands, clothing brands. Um, tonight, how does it do in your brother to represent St. Louis um, in the All-Star game? Oh, it's a, it's amazing, you know. Um, I always try to represent my hometown as much as I can. Like, there's so many, whether it's rock rocking icons never die, or rocking you know the legacy brand, um, rocking the patience brand. It's 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 a lot of them back home that you know I just try to uplift. A lot of black owned companies, I try to uplift and be a part of, and you know try to get their names out there, their product out there. Um, and, uh, it's been, it's, it'll be very, very exciting tonight to be able to share the floor with Jason, um, us literally being from same city, living five minutes from each other, going to the same school, pretty much having almost the identical path to each other tonight. Um, and so it's, 
it'll be a, it'll be an honor for sure. We've never been on the same team. I don't even think in pickup we've been on the same team. So it's been uh, it'll be really cool to be able to share a floor with them for sure. Jalen. Hey, Bradley, congrats on the All-Star selection once again. Um, just kind of feeding off what Brianna said, I'm not sure if you're aware, but you and Jason Tatum are actually the first St. Louis-born All-Stars uh, since David Lee did so in 2013. Uh, does that motivate you at all? And have you talked to Jason at all about the journey from St. Louis to the NBA now? Uh, all the time. I mean, we all, all three of us went to the same high school. So right. um, we're just, I guess, products of our environment in a way. Uh, you know, we all push each other. You know, D. Lee was the was the pioneer in in, in the whole process. And me growing up, I, I admired his 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 path. And hell, I went to Florida just like he did. Ended up signing to the same agent as he did. And um, it's definitely it's definitely unique to be able to see our paths all kind of be similar in a way. And uh, you know, I definitely credit David for that. And I'm definitely happy and thankful that Jason was able to pick up the range too. Um, and see that it was possible within himself, you know, um, right. and, you know, for him to be able to make a name and, and be where he is today. So, you know, to be able to have this, my third all-star game, I think Jason's second or third, even two. And then, you know, for us to be able to be from the same city, D Lee has, I think two under his belt, you know, that speaks volumes and we're only going to continue to get better. Thank you. Cameron. Hey, Bradley, um, congratulations on another All-Star nomination. Sir, I wanted to ask you about your Washington Wizards team. Last year, you came, you visited L.A., you weren't too happy, you put up big numbers, but you weren't ha too happy with the competitive spirit of the team. And I want to ask you about this year, the competitive spirit, kind of what do you, what do you notice as a difference and then how you guys are vibing on your way to make some a playoff push? Well, I feel like, uh, you know, we're seven and three in our last 10. You know, so we've been clicking really well. and We try not to make excuses, but we had a bus load of them at the beginning of the year. You know, everybody not being at camp, um, COVID hitting us. You know, we had seven to eight guys of our guys out. Um, you know, so we're, we were playing with guys we had to add and on the fly, bringing up our G League guys um, and kind of throwing them in the fire. So it was it was tough for us. Uh, but I would definitely say our competitive spirit has always been there, even when we lost. Like, it was just – the little bad habits that we created that ended up losing us those games, you know, down the stretch, not closing them out. And I would say in the last 10 games, we've been a lot better at that. We've lost some, we've got, I think we got our butt kicked maybe one time out of, you know, the 10 games. I think the Clippers whooped us. So it was good for us to be able to get, get in that mode of, you know, gelling back together um, and playing really good basketball, playing playoff style basketball. That's what we've been doing. Um, and so that's been very promising. And it just took a, it just took some time. Um, you know, for that to happen, for guys to be able to get their rhythms, um, get their energy back, get back into the flow of the game. Um, but, you know, we have our, our work cut off for us in the second half of the year. we got 38 games, 78 back-to-backs. Um, so it'll be tough. But, you know, the, the work ethic is there. The focus is there. Uh, so I'm, on that standpoint, I'm happy about it. And lastly, I'd like to ask you about the evolution of your game. Um, personally, kind of how you feel you have grown or the game has slowed down for you over the past, say, three or four years? A anything special you've been working on, or is it just uh, just growth? Uh, I think it's, it's a little bit about everything. Like, I, I work on my game uh, to a T. Like, I, I, I'm very passionate about my craft, and, you know, the things I'm good at, I try to, you know, perfect, and the things I'm not so good at, I try to get better at. And I was, I've always had that mentality since a little kid, and, you know, I still apply it to my game today. And uh, it's it, at the same time, I also think it's a lot of it has to do with my confidence, my faith, um, God's blessings, you know, just to be on the path I'm on and to be in the situation I'm in, you know, because like you said, it's, it has been, you know, three or four years of me kind of growing on this path. And now um, it's not like a, it's a fluke thing. Everybody's like becoming a believer of it. So, um, in that regard, you know, it's just, you know, I just keep pushing and keep putting the work in and just letting the, let my game speak for itself. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, we'll give the last question to Gerardo. You there, Gerardo? Culture of sports? 
Yep. Hey, Brad. Congrats, man. Thank you. Uh, fans in DC are, are eagerly waiting to attend games. Um, as of this week, Major Bowser is still not allowing fans in the nation's capital. And uh, although she continues to ask for, for patience, um, some of the Nats, uh, Washington Nationals players, have disagreed with, with her decision. Um, how important for you is uh, the DC fan base uh, right now? Uh, you're seven and ten at home. Uh, you know how important for you is uh, for fans to you know come back to DC, and what's what's your take on it right now? Well, I don't want fans until like everything is. My my biggest concern is safety. Like I I can hoop with or without fans. Personally, uh, we definitely. I'm not sitting here saying we don't miss the fans. It definitely changes the dynamic of the game. The, you know the intensity of the game. I think in a way, but. Safety is the is the biggest and main concern, you know, and, and it's more or less for them, you know, because they won't technically have access to us. They won't be like right on top of us or anything like that. So it's just making sure that everybody is safe. We're trying to keep the world safe, like especially in D.C. We have to understand that we're at the focal front, you know, we're at the focal front of everything. Um, you know, we are the nation's capital. So everything we do is magnified and everything we do is will be copied and, you know, kind of go from there and so I think what the mayor's doing is exemplary like she she has to do that and um I'm with her like I don't think we should have fans until you know we're good <laughs> honestly so I mean it's just definitely tough not being able to hear the you know the chants and the roars and you know the screaming that we need you know to give us that push but I mean at the same time that's why we're paid a lot of money to go out there and do what we do so it's no excuse. Nobody has home court advantage.